teach you. We have big tricks. Bamboozle. Bro, and guess what? We ain't hating each other for it today. To the scripts. You're not black, Hispanic, Native American. No, we've been everything in the book. Who these devils say that you are? Straight for the line of Jacob. Jacob, Jacob known as Israel. Yeah. Israel here up the light. Yeah. God well, said it's the light. Be the one to get yeah. the kingdom. Yeah. Kingdom that rules them all. Yeah. Kingdom that rules them all. Yeah. 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 What's up yeah. 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 about yeah. yeah. the law? The laws of God. That's what the truth is. Oh, yeah. Este es mire. Este es pero lana, hermana. Sí. The Bible calls the so-called black men the, uh, from the nation of Israel to his commandments, and that's what causes you and changes you from being imperfect to perfect. Anything that comes out of man's mouth that's not from the Bible is a liar. So I'm gonna bring everything from the Bible. What's your name again? Brother Robert, Brother Robert, I'm Soldier Zero. Nice to meet you. All right, one more time. Let's read that from the top. They shall not make baldness upon their head. So you're not supposed to make baldness upon your head. Do you know what that means? You're not you're not supposed to shave off the hair on your head. Are you still able to grow hair on your head? Oh, you've heard that before. Okay, all praises, all praises. Can you still grow hair on your head? On the sides. So even so. Because it just only grows on the side, a lot of our people end up shaving off all of their head. They feel like it's Make shameful it right. to it have, right. uh, you know, only hair growing on certain parts of their head. But God says that's a commandment for the Israelites to have, no matter where it grows. So we need to make sure that we have hair on our head if we can grow it. Do not shave it off. That is a commandment of the Most High God. Finish that out. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard nor make any cuttings in their flesh. So neither shall we shave off the corners of our beards. Right. Now let me ask you a question, brother. Can you grow uh, any more hair on your face or do you just style it that way? Of course I can grow it, yeah. Okay, so that's a commandment according to the Most High God that we don't shave our head and that we don't shave off the corners of our beard. All praises, brother, all praises. That is a part of repentance right there. That is a very good part of repentance right there. Now you said that you knew that you were Israel. All praises. Now do you know what you is required of you being Israel? Give me Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. Do you know what's required of you now that you know that you are an Israelite? Follow his instructions. All praises. Let's get it from the Bible. Because the Bible explains itself. The Bible gives you the definition of everything that you need to do in order to serve and please God. Now let's get the understanding. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? So now, what does the Lord thy God require of you, Robert? Read. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord. To do what? To keep the commandments of the Lord. Now let's read that one more time, because a lot of people feel like that they can do whatever they want to do and still get the kingdom of God. A lot of people feel like they can do whatever they want to do and still obtain salvation. Let's read that one more time. And now Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee He's telling you what he requires of you, Robert. Pay close attention. This is something that we have to do. Read. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. For your good. This right here is for your good. Right. If you keep the commandments, if you keep the commandments, then that's how you properly serve God. Right. That's how you are, are assuring your spot. Let's get Matthew chapter 19, verse 17, because we need to understand how exactly do we keep, get the kingdom of heaven? Everybody else is walking in, in asleep, asleep walking around. We need to understand. We need to wake up. Get un the understanding of why we're in these conditions. Get the understanding of why we're in this place that we're in right now. It matters. 
All of this matters, and the Bible is the way that we get out of it. The Bible is going to be the way that we get back on top to where we need to be. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may enter it, that I may have eternal life? So a man asked Christ, what can I do so that I can have eternal life? What can I do so that I can get the kingdom of heaven? Yep. Isn't that something that you want to know, brother? Without a doubt. All praises to the Most High. I'm glad that you're here. You have a very humble spirit. Yep. Read on. Verse 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandment. Do what? Keep. The commandment. No, do whatever you want to do. Keep the commandment. All praises to the Most High. So you know right now that you need to keep the commandments of God in order to get the kingdom of heaven. There is nothing else. There is no other way that we can get the kingdom except keeping the commandments of God. Now, tell me, uh, tell me one other thing. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Now that you're here in front of the prophets, I need to know if you have any questions. All praises. I'm seeking daily. Well, you're seeking daily. Well, brother, now you don't have to look anymore. You have that flyer. That flyer has the address and location and phone number of our school. You can check it out. You can catch us every single Saturday at 1230. You can come and catch us catch us there. Now, let me ask you. Oh, actually, just uh, let's get the fringes. Now, you might be wondering, why do we have these on our, on our clothes? You heard about the fringes. Do you know why we wear the fringes? Let's run it by you because it's very important. Let's get it from the very top. Read that. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 37. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So bid means command. The, the Lord commanded us to make fringes in the borders of our garments. Read. Throughout their generations. Throughout our generations. Now, my brother, do you have any children? Yeah. All praises. So we're still generating. We're still generating as a people. Israel is still going on and on and on and on. Therefore, we need to have these fringes on our clothing. Right. Read on. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So that's the reason why we have the blue ribbon around our fringes. Right. Read on. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which ye used to go a whoring. So this, these fringes that we wear every single day or everywhere, this is a safety net for us. This is for us to understand, hey man, you know, I need to keep these commandments. I need to keep these commandments. I can't go far off from God. It's just like having our armor. Right. Exactly. This is our armor. Right. Right. We need to know we need to stay away from things that have nothing to do with being an Israelite. That have nothing to do from being godly. That's the reason why we have these fringes on. We remember. Instead of looking at a girl or walking around and smoking, we understand, hey, we need to we need to stay away from all of those things. Right. My brother's right over here. My brother with the cigarette. Pull up real quick, man. Pull up real quick. Let me let me uh let me talk to you for a second. Let me talk to you for a second. Now, you said, um, do you smoke? You don't smoke? You smoke. My, my man's right over here smokes. All right, pull up real quick, man. Come close, come close. All right, hey, shalom, bro. My name is uh, Soldier Zarat. Soldier Zarat, nice to meet you, man. What's your name? Maurice. Maurice? Yes, nice to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you. Now, uh, do you smoke weed as well? I don't smoke weed. You don't smoke weed? Okay, all praises, all praises. Now, uh, let's get, how do you feel, uh, how do you feel how God feels? What do you think that God feels about you smoking cigarettes or smoking yeah, weed? Uh, well, well, I know he don't like it. And I know he, 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 he knows it's unhealthy. Bring it up! And it's not doing nothing but killing me slowly. It might be killing me fast. So God... God doesn't uh, approve of it at all. God doesn't approve of it at all. At least you know that, brother. So now that you know that, 
what do you have to do? It's very important that we that we get away from these things that God doesn't approve of. Because he will put us to death. Let's get uh first Corinthians chapter three, verse sixteen. You there? Read. The book of first Corinthians, chapter three, verse sixteen. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the spirit of God dwelleth in you. So the spirit of God dwelleth within you, brother. The right. spirit of God is within inside of you right now. But guess what you're doing to that temple? By smoking, by defiling it. Read. If any man defile the temple of God. So now he's going to give uh he's going to give a consequence of you defiling your temple. As you said, you feel like it's slowly or quickly killing you. You have no idea, but yet you continue to smoke. So you know this information and you continue to do so. Read what he's going to do to you at the end of the day. Read. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. God says he's going to destroy you. Whether if it be slow or quickly, God is going to destroy you for defiling your temple with cigarettes, with lead, with any type of drugs that you guys may be involved in. Read. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So the temple of God is holy. And that's the temple that you are, brother. That's the temple that you are, brother. We need to understand these things and get up out of these, these strongholds that the so-called white man has us under. We, we don't need to be smoking. What do you smoke for? What, what, what's the reason? I don't even have a reason. I don't even have a reason why I smoke. And, 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 well, I, I, I have a reason, but I'm not going to use that reason. And, 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 and because the reason is an excuse. Yeah, right. I don't, Read. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want my reason to be an excuse. The only thing I need to do is, is, is stop. The only thing, you, all right. praises, all praises. That's right. That's right. So what should you do with that cigarette right now? Put it out. All praises. Stomp it out. Stomp it. That thing should not be, that thing should not be smoked at all. Yeah. All praises to the Most High. All praises to the Most High. That's what it's all about, bro. Hey, all praises to the Most High. Look, I wait. I need you to stick around real quick, cause once you head around that corner, you are gonna light up another one. Right? Right? Hey, man. Look. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh! Right, right. You feel stressed and you feel alone. I feel you. And guess what? All these brothers have been there. All of these brothers have gone through things like smoking, being on drugs, uh, uh, being in and out of everybody's house, being in and out of being homeless. These things are very hard for our people. Get Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 14. Unless if you had something better. If you had something better, you can go ahead and bring that out too. Now, Here's the thing. And then uh, get me believe after that. Read that. The book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 3. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. We ourselves were sometimes foolish. We're not up here telling you to do something that uh, we haven't done before. You know what I'm saying? We have all been through everything that you have gone through, brother. We have been through everything that you have gone through, brother. We're not up here trying to be all righteous, acting like we haven't been through it. We understand your pain. We understand your struggles. But guess what? We repented. We got out of it. Why? Because of this Bible. Read. Disobedient. Deceived. Serving diverse lust and pleasures. Serving diverse lust and pleasures. Smoking cigarettes, that's a diverse lust. Smoking cigarettes, that's a pleasure right there. As soon as you feel like you're stressed or anything, you feel like you can take it away from that cigarette. That's what you feel like. Give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16 verse 12. I think that's what I want. It's like serving another God. You you run to cigarette. Exactly, brother. Exactly. It's like serving another God. 
You run to cigarettes instead of to the most high God for what he has to say on your situation. You run to cigarettes instead of uh, doing what you're supposed to do as a man. You can change your whole condition. You can change exactly how you've been brought up, brother. You don't have to do that. Um, all praises to the most high that you that you threw those cigarettes away. That almost brought a tear to my eye, brother. I'm so happy about that. All praises to the most high. That's a step to repentance. That's what our people need to do in order to get out of these conditions that we're in right now. Let's read that. The book in verse 12. For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health. So it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that, that restored them to health. So it wasn't cigarettes, it wasn't pills, it wasn't any of these things that restored them to health, whether if that be mentally or physically. Because you run to cigarettes when you're stressed out. You run to cigarettes when you're feeling away. Read. But thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. But the what? But thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. The word healeth all things. The word of God is what's going to get you to change. The word of God is what's going to stop you from doing the things that you know you're not supposed to be doing. That's the reason why you threw those cigarettes away. It wasn't because of me. Anybody, anybody uh, on the internet can tell you not to smoke. There are commercials all over the place telling you not to smoke, to be tobacco free. But brother, you decided to change because the word of God was telling you so. The word of God was telling you to change. It was not me. Read. What, what you got? Read. The book of Sirach, chapter 32, verse 24. Now you said that you believed in God. You did have a small act of belief just now. But let's see if you actually wholeheartedly believe in God. Let's see the same for you, brother Robert. Read. He that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandments. So he that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandments. If you understand that God says something and you decide to do another, you do not believe. If you decide to do what God says, which is keeping the commandments, then brothers, you have a, a, a little bit of faith. You have a little bit of belief in you. All praises to the Most High. Read that again. He that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandments. And he that trusteth in him shall fare never the worse. So you're going to fare never the worse for keeping the commandments. Right. Why? Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 61. Because this is what could have happened to you for continuing to smoke. This is what could have happened to you if you didn't repent right now. The Most High could have struck you by a car because you heard the truth. You got the understanding of what you needed to do, which was not to smoke. Right. Right. And if you continue to do it as you walked around that corner... You might have you might have been plagued with something. You might have been hit by a car. Something terrible could have happened to you because the Lord knows that you know now that you're not supposed to do those things. And he will destroy you for it, as we just read. But let's see what else could have happened to you as you continue to smoke. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So now, brother, can you find an example of cancer inside of the Bible? Of lung cancer, of any type of cancer? No, you can't find something like that. But guess what? It happens to our people every day. Why? Because we're not keeping God's commandments. Every single day it happens to our people. Our people are plagued with things like gout like lung cancer, like like all these sorts of cancers and things that were never found in the Bible from the beginning. But guess what? Because we don't keep God's commandments, these things are come up, come upon us. Right, We are because we are under the curses. Now, brother, let me show you the reason why the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are in these conditions today. Why we have a whole bunch of trash and homeless people on the streets. Why it's hard for us to get a job. Why it's hard for us to do better. We can't rise above the status of our people. We got, a lot of people think, oh, well, uh, P. Diddy. We got P. Diddy. We got Oprah. We good. It's, it all depends on, you know, you, your upbringing and everything like that. No, brother, it's much deeper than that. It, it all has to do with who we serve. It all has to do with who we serve. And give me Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse... 15. Read. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not 
hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments. And, and so, so if we don't keep God's commandments, if we don't serve the Lord our God with all of our heart and keep his commandments, this is what's going to happen to the so-called black and Hispanic people. Read. And his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. He said he's going to curse us. He's going to curse us with all of these things that happen to us today. Our, our situations, our neighborhoods that we grow up in, hearing ambulances and not even and not even noticing that they're ambulances. Why? Because we grow up in the hood. We grow up walking around and seeing ambulances uh, everywhere and just hearing the sound and not even worrying about it. We just hear the sound and don't even worry about it. We hear gunshots all the time. What do we do? Keep on walking. Oh, somebody just got shot. Oh, another nigga died. Oh man, hey, Pookie died around around the corner. Why does that keep happening to our people? We are a stiff-necked people, correct, brother? But let's see in more specifics. Does the Bible say what curses are come upon us? Let's read it. Verse sixteen: Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. So cursed shalt thou be in the city. If everywhere that you look right now, especially uh, over by um, Slauson. You can see a whole strip of prostitutes, a whole strip of women walking up and down the street, half naked, ready to just go and get in another brother's car, ready to be uh, be whores, be created as whores by 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 our brothers and sisters. Our brothers and sisters are whoring each other out. Right, right. Our brothers and sisters can't even get a job in the city. Right, right. It's so hard for us to be able to rise and do better for ourselves, do better for our people. We can't do that because we don't have the laws of God behind us. Read. Now, read that again. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. So cursed shalt thou be in the field. If you look at this sign right here, brother, you can tell. And you know about slavery, correct? So us, us so-called blacks and Hispanics were put through slavery. And guess what? We, ha we got brought over here and we had to work the cotton fields. Right. We got brought over here and we had to work the sugar cane fields. Right. Right. All of these fields. And guess what? The same thing goes for today. We have to work in the job field. And we're cursed in the city for the job field. It's right. hard for us to get a job. Right. We've been trying all day and all night looking everywhere. Yoshinoya, Carl's Jr. We should be owning these places. Right. We should own the entire establishment. Right. Why? Because the world was made for our sakes. Right. God only loves us and God only chose us. Right. 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 Now, brother, uh, let me get Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Let me show you one more thing. Because the Bible is a true book. The Bible shows the beginning and the end. Now let's read that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With what? With ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Now let's read that one more time because we need to understand this scripture. Let's get the sense of it. Let's read that one more time. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So Egypt is synonymous for slavery because if you know anything about the Bible, the Israelites were brought out of Egypt already before the time of Deuteronomy. So what does that mean? Let's, uh, you know, never mind. Let's stay right here. All right, so read. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, Thou shalt see it no more again. So we got brought over here to America by slave ships. Is that correct or not? We know that from the history books. We know that from uh, from TV shows. Movies come out every single year reminding us that we were slaves. Reminding us that we are still slaves. This is Egypt right here. This is the Egypt that it was talking about. We got brought over here by cargo slave ships. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. There ye shall be what? Sold unto your enemies. So we were sold unto our enemies over here on auction blocks. The way that you see those uh, those car shows and them auctioning off cars, it was the same thing. Hey, I got a nigga over here, you know, uh, $100. Can I get $100, please? That's exactly how we were sold on auction blocks every single day. These people don't love us. Look at our conditions. 
In Beverly Hills, they clean all the streets. In Beverly Hills, there's none of this going on. No helicopters flying in the air, no ambulances everywhere. If there's an ambulance, you have a whole bunch of Edomites right outside looking, what happened? What, I, did, somebody, did somebody get sick? They have all of those questions, but here, it's so normal to us, and it shouldn't be. If our brothers and sisters are dying left and right. We're still slaves here today. That's exactly correct. Right. They create an illusion like, oh, you know what? You could get a you could get a job. They, they they created the American dream. Oh, you guys aren't you guys aren't in change anymore. What what is there what is there to complain about? You you guys aren't uh you guys aren't, you know, having to pick cotton anymore. What is there to complain about? Guess what? Our Hispanic brothers and sisters are picking cotton. Guess what? Our Hispanic brothers and sisters are picking the cabbage. These things did not did not go away. We're still doing the same things today that we were doing in slavery. Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.